Hey, hello, and welcome back. And if you're here because of my previous D&D character journal, I have great news. That campaign ended. For good reason, because we finished the campaign, which is great for many reasons. One of them being, I'm starting a new campaign very, very soon, and I need to make a new character journal for that character because I can't just make a plain old character sheet. Oh, no, 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 no. I need to make an entire journal. So what better way than to show you my entire process than filming everything start to finish? So while I'm developing this new character journal, I'm gonna be using my old one as sort of a base for everything that worked and I liked. So it's gonna be with me the entire time that I make this video so I can reference it along the way. The first thing I'm starting with was finding what kind of book I wanted. And I decided to go with an A5 binder with the six rings. I'm also going to be using a paper cutter, a glue stick, double-sided tape, washi tape, different cutting utensils. I'm also going to be using a hole punch. This one in particular allows it so I can use A5 paper. Let's start with all my scrap paper that I'm gonna be using as well as all the stuff I need for my character sheet for 5e and different dividers, etc. Oh, did I mention I also need all these other options just in case they come up? Other things I'm getting are using our stickers. Look at this cute fox sticker. Getting into it, the character design and the wonderful artwork that I'm showing in front of you right now was done by Jess, AKA at Super Sappho. You can find her like everywhere. She's amazing. She's a great friend of mine. I love her. You would love her. She's great. <laughs> so many kind things I can say about her, but she helped me create Tori Leif, my new character for this Icewindale campaign. I gave her all of the inspo pics I had, all of the sketches, everything I had set aside previously that I sent to her and she just mashed it all together in this wonderful ball of greatness. So starting off, I'm just going to put the character art onto this cardstock sheet of paper, but I wanna have a cover page that's pretty straightforward. So, I mean, I know who I'm playing, but I always have character art that I like to show my fellow players Next is figuring out what I want to go on the back side. This is uh, the tattoo references of Tori's body that I designed and then a couple of other inspo pics. So Tori Leif is going to be a ranger for Icewind Dale. She is going to be very different from other things that I've done. The thing that isn't different is the fact that I want to give my characters tattoos. <laughs> So I want to have her tattoo reference sheet on me at all times, just to make it nice and simple. So if I'm talking to anybody or if I forget what side of a tattoo is on her body, I can have an easy reference. Next, I'm just trying to figure out some of the other decorative pages that I want to have to start. One of them being where she's from. So I'm just cutting up some inspo pics that I had saved, some free to use images, one of them being of a wintry landscape. Another one was from this like scrapbook stuff that I got. So I don't know where the page is that has the map on it, but I thought it was really helpful. It felt very Nordic. And I'm using a Norse compass. It's actually one of the tattoos that's on Tori's body. So I kind of wanted to have that be more prominent, especially because it's more important for her as a character. I have her using the inheritor background and one of the things I picked from that was a tattoo that suddenly popped up on her body and I thought the Norse compass would be a very fun one. Next is just I'm trying to fill out and place where I want other things to go. I picked a bunch of different flower stickers that I have. Not that I think Icewind Dale for this campaign is gonna have a lot of flowers, but I feel like there are still some sturdy, hardy flowers that live amongst the bushes, within the forests. Also a nod to her father, who is a herbalist. So I'm just being picky, really trying to figure out where I want everything to go. It takes time, but that's fine. I actually really love the process of like scrapbookings. <laughs> Not that everyone obviously needs to do this, uh, but that's what I'm doing. 
Next is I wanted to make some like little titles and headings to put on the pages. So I just wrote everything out, took my time. Now I'm just going to cut them to size, figure it out again, do placement, all that fun stuff. So the reason for Tori's first and last name is Tori, pronounced how it sounds, and then Leif, not Leaf. I know it looks like it, but it's not. Uh, the last name is derived from Old Norse word Leifer, which means descendant, heir, or beloved, and is supposed to be pronounced like safe, but with <laughs> an L. I found that kind of funny. The reason I picked it was because the last name I found really connected to the background feature that I picked, which is Inheritor. At the time when I was developing this character, I was playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And then my partner was playing a lot of God of War Ragnarok. It was a lot of inspiration from those two games. Now, while I've been doing character creation, again, we, we're just waiting to get into session zero. I haven't rolled stats yet. There's a lot I haven't done. The only thing I've really been focusing on is developing her backstory, connecting with my game master about how we can connect my ideas with existing NPCs, making new NPCs, etc. So figuring out where I want Lonelywood to go, that is the town in 10 towns that my character is from. She wasn't born there, but uh, she grew up there due to backstory reasons. Her uncle brought her and her brother to 10 towns in Icewind Dale, and Lonelywood was where she and her uncle have settled. So I just really, the, the name Lonelywood just sounds super cool and fun. And my character is a hunter. So I thought it'd be fitting to pick one of the towns that's closest to forested wooded areas. Next is putting all the tattoos that are on Tori's body onto a different reference page. Again, just using some scrap paper that belonged to some novel or book that I picked up. Just for some extra visual elements to go in the back. And now I'm going to cut these out and figure out where I want them to go. That also includes figuring out where I want more flowers to go, of course. Again, the theme is I like it. Her father was a herbalist and I think it adds to sort of the hominess of her, if that makes sense, the down to earthness that I want her to have. So just gluing everything on, writing down the English translation to the old Norse runes that I have for her tattoos that are on her body. And now I have those two pages done. Next is all of the important nitty gritty things that I need, which is my character sheet information. This 5e character template is from Everything Dice. I purchased a journal from them a while back and I really like the layout that they have as well as some extra pages and it suits my needs. One of the things I gotta do though is I don't want to constantly write over everything like the HP and have it be messy. So I'm gonna be using some acetate sheets that I really liked from the last journal. I'm going to cut some to size and do different hole punches for it to make them fit for this journal. And now that way I can use white erase and dry erase markers. Perfect for when I'm going down in health and using a bunch of other stuff. Next is everything else. <laughs> First, I'm gonna start by making some of the more detailed sections of my journal, such as the campaign information that I wanna have. Another of the things that I really liked from the last one that I'm moving over into this one is a note-taking key. So I'm gonna use my past one as a reference. I'm not gonna change it. I'm just gonna make the layout look a little bit different. 
So one of the things that I did with my note taking key was I included things that I could use to highlight and refer back to because color really helps me when I'm trying to remember. So one of the things that we're going to start with is going to be the NPCs. I also have to have quest information. Other parts are going to be like lore drops, locations, and then I have a highlighter color for sessions so that way I can easily find where each session begins and where each session ends. Again, these are just the colors that work best for me because I don't want them to be too similar to each other. Then I have another color key. This is for when I'm doing other note taking stuff such as when I'm writing player tasks for myself and then character thoughts before and after sessions. So I kind of have a reminder for how my character is feeling and what they want to do between sessions, especially because sometimes it can be a while. For my keys, I just start by drawing the different symbols that I'm going to be utilizing. I always draw these symbols after a session, not while I'm taking notes, because otherwise that would just be too long, too time consuming. But I found this incredibly helpful so I could remember exactly what it was I cared about during each session. So some of it is like information, it can be general, caution, concern, alert, if something's jarring, like an area for travel, quests, if something was a shop, if someone was an important ally, if I had a good memory from something or a bad memory for experiences, if someone's a bad guy, if I wanted to research something. But a new section that I'm adding that I didn't have on my past note-taking key page is actually an RP reminder. I really love the RP aspect of Dungeons and Dragons. So I often found myself wanting to remind myself how I could improve and do better for my fellow players at the table. So these were the notes that I wrote down for myself halfway through a campaign that I found I kept thinking of over and over, but I also wanted a reminder of sometimes. Some of those are follow up with major dice moments, whether it's a fail or a really good success, ask for help or advice from player characters, question choices of PCs or NPCs, find links like connections, things that are the same or similar with other characters so I can bond with them more easily. And then reminding myself that it's okay to be out of character if it helps the plot and if it actually helps move things along. I don't like putting myself in a box with Dungeons and Dragons. I don't like that that's what my character would do because sometimes it's true, but also sometimes I know when that might not be helpful. So reminding myself that it's okay to be out of character is a bad, something I actually need to tell myself quite a bit. So that's going to be both my campaign information page as well as my note taking key page they're going to go at the very front of their own section. I didn't end up using a lot of the other stickers that I had left, so I'm gonna keep them in the front in case I want to add more to it later. I'm saving this little ranger danger dude for something special. So what we have so far is my front, the two decorative title pages, where she's from, tattoo references. But what I need to do next is I would like to have my backstory information actually be one of the first things that I can have to reference. Again, I have a lot of this written down digitally, but I wanna have it somewhere in short form so I can remind myself certain things as it comes up. The next thing being relationships ones that I have, ones that maybe my DM are gonna give me, ones that might come up during session zero. And then another one of the sections that I plan on making for myself that I really liked in the last one was character details. So this one's gonna to be Tori Leif's detail page. And then this one's going to be homebrew rules. We've kind of had a talk about homebrew rules, but I know more of that is gonna come into discussion with our session zero that we're having. So I'm not gonna fill anything out yet, just in case it's not set in stone. As for character details, I'm having age, height, race, alignment, personality traits, flaws, ideals, bonds, 
and then like a little appearance blob. Now, one thing I loved was this combat flow chart that I made for myself. It was so hard doing a rogue for the first time. There was a lot of things I could do and I really wanna make this and use the same exact layout for Tori. I'm just referencing exactly like what I found useful because this is actually the second time I made it. So doing Tori's, I kind of want to do it right the first time as much as possible. Keeping in mind exactly the layout that would be most useful for information. We're starting at level one. So there's not a lot I'm going to be filling in at first, but I want this to be something I can add to and adjust as I go. So I'm not gonna be filling in too much now. I just want to get the base, the blueprint of this combat flowchart done first. So part of that is gonna be setting up my action economy breakdown. What's my attack? Tori is on the top left side and then I'm writing her level and then the number in pencil then Ranger and then a section for what her subclass will be later, leaving in a space below it in case I decide to subclass down the road. Then I'm gonna be using the next little line for her passive perception. Don't know what that is yet. We haven't rolled dice and I don't think that should stop me from making a character journal for a campaign that um, I've been talking to my DM about since December <laughs> of 2023 but I really, really wanted to make a Kalashtar. It's a race from 5e that I've been interested in for a while. And even though I'm not doing like a sorcerer or a wizard or any really magic focused class, I thought it would be really cool to do it in Icewind Dale based off of the vibes that our game master sort of gave us when they were pitching the idea to do the campaign. And so I'm really, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. This was actually a reminder for my combat flowchart notes for Ranger for level one. There's a lot of basics that I'll be adding after we roll and then other things will come up such as my racial feats and different basics that come from being a Kalashtar. All right, so let's flip through my new character journal for Tori Leif. Again, starting with the title page, the cover art, flipping it over to my tattoos reference for both sides. And then of course, the little homage to where she started, her backstory page, her details page, where the homebrew rules are going to go, where the relationships are. This is her character sheet. All the stats and stuff are gonna go there. I just wrote down the very basics. This is my combat flow chart, nice and tucked away for reference so I can grab it easily. This is going to be all of her equipment, her items that will come as it happens. This is where her spell cards are gonna go. Again, just referencing to her leveled spells. This is gonna be filled out as it happens, so it's blank right now. I won't get to do it to level three. <laughs> and then these are the proficiencies. This is actually gonna be so helpful so I don't have to look it up all the time on D&D Beyond or other references online with my phone. Next is a section that I have with a divider. This is going to be where all my notes and everything goes. So my campaign information, my note taking key, and then where session zero is going to go first page. And I'm using dotted line paper. Next is a divider for party information as well as party inventory. One thing I love from the last journal was like an NPC tracker. So I'm using that again. This is gonna be very helpful, especially with like allies and organizations. Then I have a quest log, which was so freaking useful. I love quest logs. I will always use them again. I'll either make my own template or who knows. And then the back is just extra stuff in case things come up. And then I have spare pockets at the back for if my DM or other players hand me stuff. And that's it, that's Tori Leif. So going from my old journal, which I still really loved, it was still very module, but going to this new one that feels more custom than the previous one is gonna be so exciting. And there we go. From my previous campaign journal to my new campaign journal for Icewind Dale. I cannot wait to play. 
And if you're curious at all about how things go, how I use this, if you want an update, please like and comment below. Thank you so much. Bye.